Well, this is a work in progress. This is actually a move I created. Um, I call it the rib lock. It's, it's more than that. It, it kind of locks up multiple joints and ribs, but it's incredibly painful, incredibly effective, and I like to use it when I take someone's back and I feel like they're about to escape. So let's say, let's just do something real here. Maybe I get him down to his hands and knees. I'm on his back here. I get my hooks like this. And notice my choking arm's on bottom. This is actually not ideal. I want my choking arm on top. Look how he can escape and put his back to the mat. And he's already kind of escaped from my back attack. Well, if you see, my hooks are just about to be extracted from his legs. I need to keep these hooks or I need to keep control in some way. My only option here normally would just to be to do some sort of chair sit to take his back again. But we're going to take the easy way out. Now, his hip bone is right here. I need to avoid that, otherwise it's going to hurt my leg. So I'm going to pull my calf up right over that hip joint, and I'm going to lock my figure four. Now what this does is it starts to isolate his hips, but more importantly, it gives me this control here under the far leg, like this. So we're almost in like a twister hook, but with a full figure four body lock, rather than the traditional twister where the leg is under here, which you might be familiar with. So full figure four, full twister here like this, he was already escaping out this way, but that's what I want now. If you notice, I actually kind of loosen up my control on his hips because I don't have a full figure four. It's just locked down by my calf. So he actually feels like he can rotate this way a little bit more, further getting his back to the mat. But as he kind of takes that bait, that far leg is activated. And now he can't rotate any further because my hook here. It's also very difficult for him to unhook that. Now, from this position, it gets a little complicated, but we can break it down into steps so you can have success every step of the way. The first thing I'm going to do is start thinking about this near arm. Now this is what people don't really expect from this position. He's totally immobilized. His hips are immobilized. His back is immobilized. He no longer can turn into me or away from me. I've locked him entirely into this position. He's kind of fallen into my trap. Now, I don't necessarily want to make this my primary attack, but I definitely want to start having him think about what submissions he has to deal with from this position. So if he starts trying to reach down and unhook himself, I'm going to start attacking a wrist lock. So now this presents him with a double bind situation. What's he going to do? Try and escape the lock or defend the wrist? If he spends too much time on the lock, he might get tapped with the wrist lock. If he focuses on this and starts to control here and defend the wrist lock, that's actually what I want. So I'm forcing my opponent to take actions that lead him further and further into the trap. So as he tries to defend the wrist lock by connecting his hands, a lot of times he'll put his elbow down to the mat. And from this position, let's turn here a little bit so you can see the angle. When he tucks his elbow down to the mat, that's also what I want, okay? When he tucks his elbow like this, I can control at the wrist and start pulling his arm back like, he, like so, sort of like a shoulder lock. From this position, if I get his elbow on my stomach, I can actually pressure in and get shoulder locks here. But again, this isn't my main intention. It's just to keep attacking and harassing this arm so his free arm has to stay in the fight and try and control. So what ends up happening here is one of two things. He successfully defends this and stays flat on his back, or he successfully defends it and comes up on top. So you'll see, he'll, most of the time they'll realize that's their one way of escape is turning into me. And this is further um, working himself into the quicksand, because I actually want this. Because even though he feels like maybe he's coming up into my clothes guard, like so, let's ro rotate. What ends up happening is right when he gets here, he realizes he's made a mistake. Because not only did he not escape the position, but now I'm in like a mega lock clothes guard. I've got this super figure four with the, the leg lace underneath the far knee here. And again, he's got two options. Well, if he stays here, I'm threatening chokes as well now because he's not able to fully face me into my clothes guard. So he has to be defending this and bringing this far arm close again. He constantly has to use his free arm to defend and bring it into my danger zone. When he starts to try and defend anything I'm doing here up here with his body, I have multiple attacks. I can start controlling the wrist and setting up a triangle choke. Super easy. But I prefer to take the rib lock approach. So how I'm going to do the rib lock here is when I start messing with his neck and threatening him, and this elbow comes close to me, his hand is up here by his neck, I'm just going to pull this elbow up. And I'm going to hug it tight to my body, like this. From this position, most of the time, they're going to try and relieve the pressure that he's already starting to feel on his lat by turning to his knees even more and to really trying to turn into me. But what I'm going to do is pull him, pull the, the elbow up high like this. The rib and the lat are starting to get extended. I have to do this very gently because I don't want to damage 
Sunshine's precious ribs here, but I'm going to control the elbow, and I'm going to get up to my elbow. So he's got no base in this direction. My goal is to knock him all the way over. So I know we're kind of like getting into the, the depths of this sequence, but if you get them all the way to here, he's, we basically guided him down a route that we want to take, and he's probably unaware of the outcome where we're actually going to end up. So I'm going to pop my hips into him and try and drive him down to the mat. So I kind of land in mount, but my leg lace is going to remain in the same position here. So when I drive this arm through and I put my hips in here like this, if you, I'm going to extract myself from the position, but stay exactly like you are, Sunshine. So my leg is under his hip, kind of elevating his hip here like this. I'm twisting and counter-rotating his body. My figure four is locking this leg here. So what ends up happening is I'm putting tons of whip, uh, rib pressure right down on this floating rib with my hips, while at the same time twisting like this. And that's where the rib lock comes in. Let's do it one more time. So I'm trying to take the back, but he's escaping. I kind of let him escape. I want him to think he's escaping. I start attacking this wrist. When he tucks his elbow, that's where the wrist lock comes on. If he manages to defend that successfully here, he's probably going to be turning in. But I want to make sure that I give him that underhook. I have him stretched out. This elbow is key. Look how I could easily even just bring him the other way. I don't even have to go to the left. I can bring him up and over this way as well. Super stretched out, super locked in place. The elbow's going behind his head, and I'm just driving forward with my hips. Sort of like a compression on the ribs here. But there is one last trick. And again, the details are on Jiu-Jitsu X, but I just want to kind of open your mind to what's possible. But while I'm still here, I don't necessarily have to let him come on top of me. I can keep him stuck here all day. There's plenty of attacks I can do right here. In fact, when I'm attacking the wrist lock like so, and he grabs his hands together, this actually opens up a whole other submission, which I like a lot. I just switch my wrist, bring the elbow through, and trap his wrist behind my armpit. This hand can come across the neck to make sure he stays nice and flat. Left hand comes to the elbow, tuck my chest in, and we've got a scorpion death lock from the figure four um, around the hips here. And a lot of times what happens here is he has to bridge into me to relieve pressure. As he tries to bridge, I can make sure that that comes under, underneath like this. I can maintain this position. From here, another option is when this hand starts trying to come in, I can actually bail on all of this, and I can go straight to the wings of victory as well. From this position, we've got various locks. I think I got you in this the other day, Sunshine. It's pretty. We were here, weren't we? So that's the rib lock. It's from a sort of this like side saddle back control position. I've been using it a ton, super effective. 